All right. Welcome, everybody, to another NCB Bowl game for Season 35. This time, it's the Gnarly Raiderson Chainsaw Slaughter Bowl. So, quite the mouthful, but essentially, this is the theme bowl for the season. Last year, we had a bowl game with wizards for both teams. And this time, we have a bowl game with chainsaws for both teams. So, on one side, we got the Dwarves of Karak University, coached by Zedarog. The other side, we got the Nurgle of John Molson, coached by Uber. Both sides have their respective chainsaw stars. So, Flint Churnblade for the Dwarves. And Max Spleen Ripper for the Nurgle. With me right now, we got Einir and Arkayan. Gentlemen, which uh, which team are you looking forward to most getting, you know, chopped up into little bits? Uh, I say both, but I guess as far I guess I'd want the dwarves to get chopped up just a little bit more because Nurgle, you chop them up, you only really what half their effectiveness. They're still ugly. They're still smelly. Still grab you. Yeah. Dwarves, when you chop them up, they stop playing, which is always something I think all of us can agree on. The less dwarves, the better. Too true. Not to mention they are in your conference, so the worse they are, the better for you, right? No comment. Fair enough. All right. Should mention that Coach Zedero decided to add some from, add some money from his treasury to afford a bribe to hopefully keep the chainsaw going longer. That means John Molson gets even extra inducements, so let's see what they brought. Ooh, Bile Rot. One bribe, one other star player, Bile Rot, the strength five, just big distraction piece, and five dirty tricks, so we'll see if he got lucky with his rolls. John Molson, a non-AQ team, thus is the first season in the league. This will be their first bowl game, of course, hopefully not their last. Karak University been in the league quite a while. They don't make a whole lot of bowl games. I believe they made several McNurgles, so this is a nice change of pace for them on a four-win season, I believe, maybe five. Don't forget, he is the originator of the character poll. True, the new fluff-based poll where some of us who do the player profiles, the icons, the team logos, and all that fluffy goodness, they get rewarded. Others who don't do as much, you know, kind of get poo-pooed a bit, but Robo looks like he joined us as well. How are you? Oh, I can't complain. Just getting done with my regular shift of, you know, being called a uh, racist cop, so good times. Mm. 2020. We're all racist, don't you know that? Yeah, that's, 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 that's the deal, apparently. Luckily, I'm still on a fairly conservative area that still supports us. So. Alright. Well, I think there's one thing we can all agree on is that we can't wait for these chainsaws to go head-to-head. -head. Perfect D to start the game. We'll see if the dwarves get closer. Farther away, perhaps. The ball is a very deep kick, so it's got a chance to go out of bounds, which would help the Nurgle considerably. Albeit they have a sure hands dodge guy to pick up the ball. Two decent Pestigore supporting him. One rookie, essentially. Got a strength five bloater. Two two skill bloaters and a one skill bloater. Guard rot spawn. Pretty solid looking Nurgle team for a first season. Will they use the saws to foul or to blitz? That is the question. Got to use them for the fouls. Come on now. You'd hope. Granted, it's not like the Nurgle have a bunch of players who are like dedicated to blitzing with yet. I mean, there's the one Mighty Blow bloater. There's a tackler, but... You know, we could see the Chainsaw Blitz. I suppose the best thing about the Nurgle bringing two stars is that you literally don't have to have a Rotter on the field, so... No... Simple lineman to target for the dwarves. Just pushes so far as well. That's not how the Nurgle wanted to start this. Sets up the three die block and indeed takes down Elric, the sidestepping guard dwarf Lino. 
for Carrick University. I believe they have a couple seniors that are going to be leaving after the game. They've got some linemen with several skills. Two, three, this guy's got four. Troll Slayer with movement six, Juggernaut Mighty Blow. It's a nice player. Movement six, Guard Mighty Blow Blitzer. A three skill Blitzer. Kind of a young Troll Slayer, so pretty solid team. You know, standard Dwarf stuff. Here's our Blitz. And the first time the chainsaw is used, it kicks back and hits him, wastes the team reroll, and breaks his own armor. Brutal turn for the Nurgle. Boom. Gotta love the Still spot. early, but it may not uh, may not matter as much. The, the stun is going to be nice for, for uh, Eric. Don't no, use the chainsaw to the foul the chainsaw. the chainsaw. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> means this dwarf up top here needs to oh yeah, that works too I suppose unless you trap yourself let's see what he does here you have to go down get the pow and then do you push somebody else out of the way but you need to okay so you can move the lino get yourself in there for the foul this is gonna be nice unless he also gets the kickback on the one which would be hilarious and fair not that anything's fair in Blood Bowl. There we go. Ah, he gets the six, but he can't injure the the other chainsaw. Chainsaw go ver. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird first turn for both teams. We'll see what John Nelson can do. Pretty solid first season for Nurgle. Not an easy team to start with. I believe they were like 5-3-2 and two, or 5-2-3, and three, so not bad at all. They suffer from the same issue like your lizard teams or chaos is going to be, which is that it just takes you basically a full season to get your warriors to the point that they're useful and then once they're there like they are right now then the team really starts to be doable for sure he's done a very good job getting them developed two with two skills well, three with two skills and one with one that's not bad at all pestigore is relatively even as well three with two skills one with zero program on the rise perhaps quite a few good non-aq teams from this past season. Jeff Rose is playing tomorrow. Durthus is playing sometime. Oh, speaking of Durthu, chimes in in the chat. I don't know when Air Force is playing their game against Paris and Dufer's non AQ team. And then Baz already played and won his bowl game with his Bretonians. 1 0 defensive fest against some feisty humans, so. So far, so good for the non-AQ. Ah, Durthur already out, played, I'm, that's right. I'm still amazed at the six casualty performance by the uh, Manglisota Wolf last night. Or right? That was still impressive. Uh, it was the Icelandic Dolts, Astaflix. But yes, six oh, casualties right. in one game. That's crazy. And there's also two more NBFL games tonight. I'm playing against OTS's Dwarves at 9 p.m. Central with my new Slon. And then JR's Orcs make their triumphant return against Jeffro's Demons of Corn, also at 9 p.m. Central. So we got a doubleheader. It's possible that me and Rel are playing tonight. I believe he wanted to play our – I think we got our wires crossed, so I'm going to be sitting here. Either way, I'm available for it, but that whole change of days going to – because he's over in where, like, Asia area, right? Correct. Like China or Japan or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so I think we had a little bit of confusion on which day, so I put in there Thursday night, but that would be our Thursday night. Then I, I'm under the impression on the last – message he sent but then he hasn't responded again because i think he went to bed that he said okay i'll see you tonight so i wonder if he's under the impression we're going to be playing in uh an hour and a half huh so well, i guess we'll find I, out i suppose if he does show up i'm available so we'll get it done but 
I like you said, is uh, I have a feeling that game is going to be me um, attempting to lose the, the battle to win the war. I think that's going to probably be. I'm not going to be losing oh, a bit. A lot so of interesting, interesting. So we get the foul by the one chainsaw onto the other chainsaw. He gets hurt and gets caught, but the bribe is used to keep the dwarf chainsaw on the field, but the Nurgle chainsaw is out. So, not the start John Molson wanted. Kind uh, takes a little bit of luster out of the chainsaw bowl, but... Yeah, especially because now with using the bribe, after this drive, it's almost guaranteed the dwarf chainsaw's out, too. This is true. And now the much more experienced and skilled up dwarf team is just locking up these Nurgle and can make it very difficult for them to do a whole lot. The stadium does want blood, you're right, Wolves. And the Nurgle are getting nothing but pushes and both down so far, so hard to make a lot of room against dwarves if you can't even move them. Probably got a swing to the south behind your bloater and rot spawn or whatever he's called now. I think Beast of Nurgle is the official name still. Like we should just all agree on that. Well, that's the same thing as I still call Chaos Warriors Chaos Warriors. I don't call them blockers, or or blockers now or whatever the hell. Something like that, yeah. They're still Chaos Warriors. I refuse to call them the other. And then High Elves have like Dragon Warriors and Lion Warriors. Like, they're just Blitzers and Catchers, guys. Come on. Eventually, this Dwarf Slayer has to go down. Like, well, no, maybe not. You have a block at the top. Nope, that's a lot of guard. And then double skulls. <laughs> Jesus. Do you just have to run backwards now with the ball and see what develops? Nah, you, you you punch right up in the middle there. Come on now, you be the you be the bash team you were meant to be. You cage up and you go throw yourself in the middle of it and you duke it out with those dwarves. Doesn't look like we'll get a shot on the ball from the blitzer in the back. That's a very nice KO by Bilerot. And this is not a block I would throw. Some good dodges from the Pestigors there. John Molson down to a mere two, well, one reroll already. I wonder if they started with two. Or if uh, he had to have at least had three because he rerolled the saw on the first turn as well. That's what it was, okay. Do you have any preference or ideas about where the mighty Fresno State program can get into a conference next season? Do you have any? If you had to pick, where would you go, Robo? Uh, somewhere where I could hurt you or Crichton, probably. Oh. Well, we'll give you to our kind then. <laughs> oh, no, Gark is calling for you to come to the Beast. Which is where I'm oh. at. In he's at with his wonderful wood elves. No, no, you should go to the Smack conference just to break up the, the elf and rat monotony they have going on. I mean, I, I promise you with Undead I won't use up my maximum of four fouls and maybe more depending on how pissed off I am <laughs> on a nightly basis. He 
He's already used his reroll this turn, so if you blitz here, I think you have to dodge through the bloater into a tackle zone to get the Pestigore, but it is a two die. So he's gonna go straight through the bloater and tag the ball with diving tackle. And tackle, so that's not a bad play. I was gonna say you could maybe swing around and chain push the guys off the ball, but that's a sidestepper there, so. Nurgle in a bit of trouble, turn four, the first half in the gnarly Raiderson Chainsaw Slaughter Bowl. Also, for uh, Aner, when uh, uh, I created that Fresno State team, uh, Navy wasn't playing, so I do have a Na Navy transfer that's on the roster right now for when her team <laughs> wasn't playing. There's a skeleton just hanging out with all the zombies. As they do. I tried to give Einir some shit yesterday. Uh, one of his old draftees, MD the Annihilator, he's been around. <laughs> he played like garbage. He was that terrible. Game. That's no troll. That's <laughs> god awful. And he tried to double scar the first turn of the game. And then he got stunned three times. So. And know, my old uh, Notre, I... Notre Dame uh, Blitzer was rookie of the year in the NBFL last <laughs> season. That uh, the guy who's on the Pro Elves now, or the. Yeah, is he on Pro Elves? Is it Gark's team? He's Dark Elves, but yeah. Dark Elves, there you go. He was a Pro Elf when he was in college, is what it was. That's what it was. Then he's seduced by the dark side of the Force. Okay. Got himself in an award, so. And like I said about that, that it's like, you know, showing off that Navy pedigree. Double skull. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> doing, doing big things. That's all right. I have, uh, like I said, his first game of the season, I get to look forward to beating the crap out of Rel for 14 turns and him scoring on two one turns and me still losing the game. <laughs> I have a feeling that's how this first game is going to go. He just has too many pieces for me to effectively deal with this early in the season, I think. The defending champs already on the run from some just little rats. Won't be on the run. It's just I'm going to try to injure as many of them as possible so I don't have to deal with them in the second half. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. If you injure them too much, it hurts their chances of them hurting your rivals. Like, not, like, physically hurting, obviously, but for every team that he beats along the way, that helps you in the long run. So I'm not worried about it. I can beat JR and I can beat Jeff Rowe. Oh, shit. The smack talk from Robo, the defending Super Bowl champ. And a foul from Blade Divac. Doesn't do anything, unfortunately. But John Molson and uh, the boys, they've kind of regrouped. It didn't look too good for them in the first couple of turns, but they've kind of stabilized. They control the middle of the field now, and we'll see what the doors can do to counter. Is there a foul limit in the chainsaw bowl? Yes, there is, unfortunately. I feel like it should be waived. Well, you may have a point, but one chainsaw is not even available anymore, so. Oh. How much do I have to petition to get all foul restrictions waived on my end? How much money do you have? I believe a couple 300,000 is what is in the bank there or so. That's cute. <laughs> we get a good surf attempt there on a Pestigore. Has to use a reroll, but gets him off the field. Uber, yeah, say, go ahead. Uh, as far as fouls go, uh, besides the fact that I saw Loco's uh, discussion as to the amount of fouls, mm -hmm. uh, didn't the NCBB, correct me if I'm wrong, used to have a limit of three, not four? I think so. That sounds right. I think that's back when we had LRB4 and Dirty Player was plus two back at the time. So, With, and yeah, you had the eye as well. Yes, the eye as well if you got caught. Little different times. Dangerous times, to be sure. No loners. Claw stack with razor sharp claws. Dirty players were plus two. Ugh. It's, it's interesting when you sit here and you look at all these histories of the different things and then you even go into the claw bomb era of the NBFL and the NCBB. And it's yeah. Just, I, I, I think I'd almost take the Living Rulebook 4 versions with the BP and the Razor Sharp Claws and stuff I got over the claw bomb. Yeah, I mean, piling on was literally just 
brain dead, click it every time. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. It just rewarded bad coaches by doing bad things. I think the uh, the the requirement for a reroll for it was pretty perfectly balanced, which still gives you. I, I mean, I'm not. I don't. You're not going to take it, but very often. But like even on a on a legendary beastman for whatever reason, if you just had nothing else that you really love with, I could see right. taking a piling on, assuming he already has claw and other things as just like a. You know, if I have one player on their team that I have to take out, I could see burning a reroll to take out, say, the movement ten gutter runner if I got a shot on him or whatever. Or, right. or you know, mm -hmm. since he's since he's sitting there and spectating chat, like taking out that ten movement six agility wood elf, wood elf monster. That that guy, I just looked at him yesterday because I I was not having a fun time with the Zongs this year, so I didn't follow a lot of NCBB. I just kind of played my games and and was frustrated but uh i i looked at that player that is that is the number one overall draft pick if i've ever seen one yeah currently five stat increases as a freshman i think maybe a sophomore he's a, he's got to be a sophomore because he has uh doesn't he or actually he might be a freshman i thought he was a sophomore though well let me double check real quick jason armstrong 16 games so yeah he's he's definitely a sophomore Going on to Junior. Let's just put it this way. That's one player that if he hit the ground and there was a, a, a war dancer on the ground next to him would would break my theory, my, 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 not theory, but my self rule of if a war dancer hits the ground, you hit, you, you foul it, even if you're not in a good position because removing it helps. I think... I would go for him instead of the war dancer. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you saw last night's game, but... Fouling the War Dancer doesn't do anything against Gark, apparently. Like, Melfine literally fouled that same strength for a War Dancer six times this season. Couldn't do anything more than stun him. So, I don't know what his what he's got going on, but not, I'm not gonna lie that that player right there would be a player that, like I'm saying, is if you were already at the four foul limit and you were in a bowl game and you were in a close game, I, I I'd go on probation to try to eliminate that player and win the bowl game. <laughs> Now, you're also running an NBFL franchise who does not pick in the top 20, like, ever. So, draft prospects don't matter as much to you. To others who, you know, usually pick in the top 10 the last two seasons, apparently, that's a player I wouldn't mind getting. So, be nice and let him get to us. Yeah, I mean, I've been fortunate, too, as I got some lucky stuff where Austin Clefarian Deadkins, the strength five, Blodge, Eastman is homegrown. I've... I've been very fortunate on some of the stuff there so that's true it uh it was just gone that way now broadway joe was a former player of apajar's hawaii program one of the early versions of it i think he was Correct. just like a strength agility draftee at the time right so he was strength agility and well when he got drafted maybe i got him in an expansion draft so i'm ah, assuming okay. he maybe got some more skills from someone else maybe um, he actually didn't have his school name on there. Him and uh, the only other one that's still alive is the Strength 5 Chaos Warrior. I backtracked and found what colleges they went to to put their tags in their names. Okay. Looks like the Dwarves going for a shot on the ball here. It's going to be a one die. Yes, it is. Takes him down, grabs him around, ball pops out, and goes look at those numbers required. Bounce, bounce, eight, bounce, bounce. <laughs> Eleven, twelve. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what uh, disturbing presence does for you. I was actually playing a game earlier with my secret league team, the Black Arcs. They're dark elf, pro elf kind of hybrids, and you have four. Kraken Helms, it's a Dark Elf player who has like a magical Kraken helmet that has both tentacles and foul appearance and disturbing presence. So I guess that's three things. It's a very cool player. The guy I hired before the game tripped on a dodge and tried to kill himself, and the doctor, you know, alleviated that. But 
It's an interesting player. It by breaking his neck or something else? No, he actually did his job for once. This is the first time my apothecary's actually saved a death in quite some time. That's, that's always the best. I see you. I see you fractured your knee. I'm gonna break your neck real quick, but your knee's better. Your knee's better. Yeah, I had a strength four Raj player on that team die two games ago, and the doctor tried to re-kill him. So I was just like, whatever. Or he tried to give him like a niggling injury, which is just as bad, or something. Whatever the case, he's no longer on the team. But no, it's a very cool player. They're only strength three, so it's a little different than a bloater, but it's interesting having that effect on like a dark elf team. We'll see if John Molson can pick up the ball here after yet another push. Also has five dirty tricks. He told us before the restart of this game, because I goofed a setting, that he had pretty good dirty tricks the previous draw so either they're not as good this time or he's saving them for the opportune moment ugh the dirty tricks that's a rough it can be rough yeah but it can also be amazing like the best dirty trick in the in the in the game in my opinion is uh, what's the one it's like automatically breaks armor and goes straight to the injury roll for the foul, foul. Blatant, Blatant foul. foul, there you go. That I, is by far the best one. I just used that yeah. earlier in the game I was talking about, and I killed a, a corn warrior. <laughs> just straight up with, like, a plus one boot. I actually think there's one that could be more useful. Custard uh, pie. Illegal oh, illegal substitution. Well, that one's yeah. good. Oh, that, 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 that nasty elf is, you know, running past, and no one's out there? Oh, look, a guy came in off the, came in out of the, off the end zone, clocked him in the face when he wasn't looking. Well, it works better when you're not playing Kemri and your player's coming off the bench on movement five, but your point <laughs> still stands. Uh, Custard Pie is really good. It basically hypnotic gazes a player. Um, Pit Trap is good. You prone a player if you have somebody next to him or something like that. I'd like to see, uh, I, and I'm sure they'll be back in some form or another, I'd like to see the, the cards come back out in this next version of Blood Bowl. I know that we didn't really get to all of them being used here on Fumble. Obviously, it's a coding whole issue, but the dirty tricks were fun. Uh, what was the other ones? The magic, magic items. Armor, yep. Magic items. Those were okay. I think the dirty tricks as a whole are better than the magical items, but it was still fun to occasionally have the magical items out running around doing things. I yeah. gotta say, the uh, in real life, the Super Bowl at Adepticon uh, its thing was, besides the Chicago Scares uh, star players that were available, they get their gimmick as well as obviously those star players was uh, everyone at the beginning of each day of the tournament got to draw from a pile of old dirty tricks, and you could hold on to it as long as you wanted. Once you used it, it went to your opponent, and if they used their, if they used theirs, you got theirs, and if they didn't use it, you got to go grab another one. So you could have that random, the random uh, dirty players just in, uh, just in a random random game. For example, I actually have a picture of one of them I had. Oop, someone didn't like that. <laughs> As I hear the ew. File appearance finally rears its ugly head. Also, Chainsaw has been active the last couple turns. He's been providing, like, assists and not fouls and blitzes and stuff. Like, what's... What's wrong with Kark? You're gonna lose him in two turns anyway, might as well use him. Oh, Jesus. Oops, squish. So, apparently you oh, don't need done. a chainsaw. When you're done. a troll slayer who just skilled up, he killed, uh... Let's see. Carlton he tried to kill him. Tried to kill him. Well, he did kill him, but... Carlton Fist was dead for a moment, and then all of a sudden his mass of blubber, or whatever's left of him, just decided to go... and reformed into the Pestigore that he is. All right, I near posting a pick in chat. Heckler, an overeager like fan. See, Go ahead. I was gonna say I'd like to see some of uh, even the other cards. Like there was cards in the old rule set that were what like three hundred k in different type inducements Ooh. that were pretty wild. Some of them. <sighs> they don't ring a bell off the top of my head. I know somebody earlier had mentioned the old like LRB four. I forgot they were called, but like Morrissey's Revenge where. A bunch of the yeah, players. Yeah, that, that was would, me. Yeah, it was you. Like a bunch of players would like roll before the game. If they rolled a one on a d6, they would miss the game completely. Uh, I think it was just the drive. Was it the drive? It was basically the equivalent of the sweltering heat. Okay. But I would. I think that would be an awesome 
thing as a blood bowl th or as a, as a bowl thing. The Actually, that, that that might also fit the McNur McNurgles if you ever wanted to do a theme for McNurgles. People are sick just being I think, near the bowl. I think the theme of the McNurgles is that you suck, so please win this game and don't be, you know, ashamed for the rest of your program's career. So in uh, in the old CRP rules is the card list I'm talking about here. Give me a sec. This is a big block here by Dale. If he can clear this lino, he's got a chance to get the ball blitz downfield and potentially break away from all the dwarves. So you had a miscellaneous mayhem deck, which was ace through queen. Oh uh, yeah, it was like well. four Special different team decks. Plays. Yeah, um, magic items, which obviously we saw. Dirty tricks, which obviously we saw. Good karma deck, which was a hundred thousand to induce. Uh, second good karma deck. Uh, random events deck, which was 200k to in induce. And desperate, desperation, desperate measures deck, which was 400k to induce. Big pickup here for Pavel Burry. Grab the ball, sneak through this gap. Oh no, he drops it, but he picks it up with the reroll. One, two, three. And then... Block with Bile, hopefully knock down Big Richard, go tag the Blitzer with the Beast of Nurgle, sorry, Rot Spawn, and you're maybe in business? Because, like, if we, if we were able to eventually, obviously, when they have new cards for the new thing, get them on there, like, look at this, this is called Morley's Revenge for 400k. You assign three players on the other team, for the rest of the game, before each drive, they have to roll a d6. On a 1 to 3... He cannot take uh, part in the half or the drive, and then on a four to six, he no to... the rot spawn. No, oh, that's brutal. That's the second Big... or third time he's done, hasn't he? Second, Big I believe. Dumb, God, if he could have tagged the blitzer, the Nurgle would have maybe gotten out of this half with a touchdown, despite being the underdog, despite being robbed of their chainsaw after the first two turns. Come on, double skulls. Uh, something else of old, uh, old rules. Oh. That I That's not call. good. Mr. Not Terry Bradshaw, sure hands dodge. Minus AV doesn't regenerate, so not as lucky as the previous Pestigore. But on a personal note, I am very happy about that because Terry Bradshaw sucked as a pro player. The guy was dumber than a box of rocks and, uh, you know. 70 Steelers are incredibly overrated, so... Uh, <laughs> personal he, won, he, he, he won four Super Bowls. Good luck taking that away from him. I mean, he can have the four Super Bowls, but I still think the team is overrated. Or it's how... Uh, that's interesting. I mean, yeah, you want to set up the two die, but John Molson is going to walk into the end zone and get out of this half with a touchdown. And we're getting rid of the second chainsaw, so unfortunately, the Gnarly Raiders and Chainsaw Slaughter Bowl didn't have a whole lot of uh, chainsaw action, unfortunately. We got five uh, five dirty tricks still to see, though. True. But back to my point, it's like how the 60s Packers have like 18 members of that team in the Hall of Fame. Like, what did what did they do when they first opened the Hall of Fame? Just put everybody who was playing at the time in it? Like, you gotta have some kind of standard. Yes, and we all agree that the more Packers that are in the Hall of Fame, the lower the standard is. Exactly. I mean, it's a little ridiculous to think that these, like, 220-pound like, defensive linemen back in the 60s could, like, somehow compare to players nowadays. I'd like to point out that if I was, you know, if it was the 60s, I could probably play pro football. Exactly. I'm excited about <laughs> Now, granted, if you have to tackle, like, Gale Sayers, like, even nowadays, some players would have a bit of difficulty, right, Nine Year? Ugh. Dude, just, I, I wasn't around for it, but watching him, the footage, just amazing. He looks like he could play in the modern day, other than the fact that he's old now. Right. I still think one of the best um, documentaries I've ever watched for someone that obviously didn't watch him play live is the docu documentary on uh, Bo Jackson, just to watch how dominant that guy was in so many different sports, and 
is and and like people talk about is that he's not in any of the record books because he didn't play long enough and really either baseball or football but it's one of those things I, where unless you watch him play it's kind of like a it's kind of like a paul bunyan-esque type story where it's just like people talking about how amazing this guy was you know true you're talking I about the go ahead i mean i say i don't know about dominant uh, okay, well you're wrong. <laughs> I watched well, 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 Jackson and <laughs> he's okay. He was Tech Mobile dominant. Don't get me wrong. I was gonna say, did you see him in Tech Mobile? Dude hit. Yeah, but did, did, have you watched? Dude hit two fifty. Yeah, but the the fact that he's able to just crank home runs. You want to talk baseball? Okay, you know he wasn't amazing, but he's cranking home runs, bouncing off the wall and making catches, just running over people in the NFL like. Yeah, just casually goes and pick up some cleats and runs for 100 yards on a Sunday, then goes and catches the ball on well, Monday. The other he, literally, he literally played baseball in his off time just because he wanted to. Okay, I mean, I, I get that and give him props for that, but he never broke 1,000 yards. I'm looking at the stats. He never had more than five touchdowns. Yeah, but he was playing part-time in literally almost all those seasons. Part-time, yeah. Here's, here's the thing. You're talking about the ESPN 30 for 30 documentary, You Don't Know Bo, correct, Robo? Correct. Yeah, I've it seen that. Really it's, it's been a while, but yeah, it was a good documentary. The dude loved baseball. Um, I don't know his statistics offhand. I think Einier has them. It, it sounded like he was actually kind of freaking good at baseball. He made a couple, like, what, all-star games? Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying is, is to be that good, you know, at both sports, the issue, and then... The fact that he basically ended his own career by if he wasn't as strong as he was, he wouldn't have dislocated his own hip on that tackle yeah. by Cincinnati. Like, there was so much force. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Um, yeah, hell of a player, hell of an athlete. The rumor is, to this day, like, he ran, like, a 4-2-4 or 4-2-something in the 40, like, unofficially timed at the combine way back in the day. So... Perhaps the greatest athlete we've ever seen. I'm, I'm not giving him. I'm not giving him. You know, trying to take away from him. He, he made it to the pros in two separate sports. Making it in one's hard enough. That's amazing. Okay. I'm just saying, like people say, like he was like the be all end all, and I'm just like, I think he it's he seems to be a case in a in a similar vein, not the same character case, but the 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 ambidextrous pitcher. He'll go down in the rule books as being the first to do something. But the, his, the the careers themselves may not be as Impressive. notable as if he had been one or the other. Right. Um, it reminds me a little bit. There's another ESPN 30 for 30 documentary. Apparently, we're doing free advertising. Um, Deion Sanders double play, which covers a time period where he was playing football for the Atlanta Falcons, and then literally flying the same day to go play baseball for the Pittsburgh Pirates. No, the Atlanta Braves. I think. Pretty sure it's both Atlanta teams. That makes the most sense. I think they were just playing in Pittsburgh. But yeah, he was literally playing pro football and pro baseball the same week in one off season or one season because the baseball team was in the playoffs and Atlanta was, you know, doing good. He we're got an IV some, on the plane, according to Dirthu. I believe it. We're getting what some bombs here in the second half. Hey, got a nice yeah. little water with some bombardier going on there. So problem with that is that it is very sunny which doesn't help but it's going to be the best thing is when the the rotter uh, fumbles the bomb and takes out half his own team exactly can't be any worse than uh last night's semifinal game where nelphine got the same exploding bomb ruin or exploding runes yeah what's the ex Put, I, I missed that part what's the exploding runes portion of that do you like throw bombs at people <laughs> you have no hands and you have bombardier for the rest of the drive no, no, I mean, I get, I get Bombardier, let's just throw the bombs. But what's the Exploding Runes specific part? Because I see Secret Weapon, Bombardier, No Hands, Exploding Runes. I think that's just the name of the card. They yeah, put it, it, uh, it names the card on the top of it, correct? On all of them, I believe. That sounds ah. right. But yeah, Nelphine had the same card, played it on a zombie, but didn't really use it against Fayetteville. Again, zombie trying to throw a bomb is not great, but... Hey, zombies are going to be even better at uh, throwing <laughs> passes in the upcoming rule set. I thought I saw someone mention about the new rule set that it makes bombs dangerous in the sense that you're not going to go chucking them long field, but if you don't care if you lose the player, you want someone to just drop it at their feet because you don't care if you fumble. It's not a bad idea, I suppose. 
hadn't really looked into it that much, but certainly an interesting option. Oh, you have a cage right there? My zombie just wanders up, drops a bomb, and says... <laughs> front of the cage, Eel. gone. <laughs> yeah. It seems like a valid tactic to me. Especially if it lets you do... Because I also saw someone mention the move and pass, or pass then move. So you drop it at the feet and try to shuffle away. You're not in the... Uh... Like the fumble ruski skill yeah, or the do. running pass. I'm, I'm not sure they would combine with the bomber, but I could be wrong. If it does, I, I don't know be outstanding. Either. Just wander up, fumble ruski a bomb, and scamper away. <laughs> just whoop. Interesting. I have a feeling, right? If even if you did do that, I would assume the minute the bomb hit the ground, it would go off anyway. Yeah, I mean that seems likely. It's not like you're playing Bomberman where you can like leave it and then walk away or Zelda or something. <laughs> but if you could. Because let's be honest. Oh, that'd be glorious. All of us, all of us love Blood Bowl, but we all also agree that GW has some issues when it comes to game balance. I well, mean, the game's not really designed to be perfectly balanced. Yeah, I mean, you look at like an ogre team, right? You can't argue to me in any way that that thing is anything more than a joke race, basically. Like you talk about, it's not. Yeah. It's not designed to be balanced. It's designed to be like, I got a bunch of snotlings that I'm throwing all over the field and seeing what the hell happens. <laughs> exactly. You understand hey. what I mean, though. Balanced in the fact that there's no uh, obvious abuses. Yes, you can do something silly like that for fun or, or make that your main strategy. But I mean, it's not like I'm taking advantage of the rules to, to, screw, you, to screw someone over. Right. I mean, the game's not remotely close to rock, paper, scissors. It's very much here's three good strategies and here's like three garbage strategies but i don't know we'll see with the new rule set how things go it's going to be completely different all these random skills versus pick skills and all this other stuff looks like john molson with the perfect d deciding what best to do with it it's definitely going to with the new skill set it's definitely going to bring changes to the nc probably less so to the ncbb because you already have people aging out as it is you might end up with people aging out earlier which is something we've talked about anyway um and then the mbfl is i think where you're going to see the biggest amount of changes to the new rules so whatever we decide to end up using for that league true i can but see I'm... a type I, I can see a thing where we start um you know you start off with uh you know 2000 as your team value that you can buy back and then other than that you just have rookies or whatever right yeah, I mean, there'd be a little more cycling of teams than there is now. So Cattle, for example, or the Rex couldn't just keep the same core eight players together for what seems like an eternity. Well, you'd, you'd look at right now, even if you said, okay, we're dropping it down to 2,000 and you don't, you have nothing besides rookies, that's 800 team value I have to cut from the team right now. Right. So you're keeping Joe, you're keeping the three healthy warriors, you're getting rid of the Minotaur, you're keeping Deadkins, and you can take the rest, right? Yeah, I mean, that's basically you end up with no skills on anyone other than those five players and a bunch of rookies or so. Question, those players you cut, will they go into like a redispersal draft type thing? I mean, we're just talking hypothetically right now, so we're not sure how yeah, it will I'll... play out. But I'm, I'm sure as the rule set comes out, you're going to have a discussion from Boz and Jeffro and whoever else. Connor and, and the, you know, the, 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 the council of minds i suppose that uh, the brain trust some decisions nice. yeah i've been fortunate enough to be involved in some of those discussions not often but occasionally <laughs> do you have a decision to make up top do you stand up the bloater and risk getting surfed or do you commit to blocking the troll slayer away nurgle uh they've got a hold on here they've got a bomber they've got the one to zero lead but dwarves got the ball and they're uh looking to Make their way downfield. You blitz the troll slayer, right? You're gonna have to put another mark up there, which then uh, you're still not able. I was trying to figure out a way to get the bombs free because I want to see him throw the bomb. Just, I was gonna say, just drop the bomb one square in front of you, right? Yeah, I mean, but I'd like to see it go. I mean, if you could get it just over top of that runner that's standing directly in front of him, obviously, then you have a chance to knock the ball out or something as well. True. Two runners are juicy targets for sure. Here comes our blitz from... Never mind. I'm 
I mean, you could blitz. Let's see what he does. Okay. Blitz is the sidestepper. Which that's probably the correct play out of the sidestepper. Just keep tying up the guy with bombs to make his throw worse. Or he's going to throw a block. I do really like in the new rule set the kind of speciality where it, you know, your gutter runners get a lot worse at throwing the ball or your war dancers or other things like that. Yeah, certainly curtails that aspect where an agility team can just punt the ball away and, and win with anybody or just gutter runner to gutter runner for these long touchdowns that turn the game around. Nah, don't remind me. Nightmare. <clears throat> Nightmare's game. I mean, I think that. it's a good thing for you because teams can't just like steal the ball from oh, you no. and chuck it yeah. away. That part I'm so I'm kind of excited about. I'm just meaning gutter rider, gunner rider, have nightmares about it. Oh, for sure. I'm, I'm excited the chaos team gets a troll back. All right, everyone loves a chaos troll. So he's doing so what it's supposed to. He's going to be similar to the the underworld one, then, right? He just takes mutations on normal. Yeah, I, I would assume because the Minotaur gets mutations on normal. Okay. And but I, I'd much rather have a troll with really stupid than a Minotaur with wild animal. Not to mention he has A V nine and regeneration, so he just is a better roadblock. So according to and, the projected and projectile roster, bombing. Yeah, I'm not I haven't looked into what that is, but according to the projection projected lineups, zero to one chaos troll, he has a very cool new icon as well. I'll post in the chat in a second. He does have mutation access on normal, so might get your wish. Not just having to deal with a minute anymore. And... It's a more reliable roadblock, but then we run into the issue is, is we're going to end up having to see what our team values and stuff look like, because he may not be worth it. You're going to need the Chaos Warriors more than you need the Troll. Oh, also, that's a good point. Projectile Vomit, apparently it's like just, it's a, goes straight to injury. Yeah, it... So you basically vomit acid onto people is the fluff behind it. Mm. And it goes straight to injury, but I think it has something. It, it goes straight to the armor roll, I think. But if it doesn't break the armor, it doesn't do anything. Okay. So it's so, my understanding. so a bit like, like stab? stab then? Yeah. That's very similar to stab, it seems like, then, yeah. Do you have a like distance you could do it at? Do you have to be next to them? Uh, I don't remember. I'd have to look at it. I think it was next to them. I don't believe there was a distance on it. I'd have to look at it again. I was looking at all the things here. Hold on. I have the whole freaking thing saved on my desktop. Nice. Because I was reading through it. I'm sure most of us are going to have to do the same whenever the rules come out because there's quite a bit to uh, devour. I plan on probably just going on eBay and buying a copy of the rule book because I'm sure there will be some people that buy the box set and don't want their rule book i already have teams i don't need a box set but i would like to have just a hard version of the rules so i can read it front to back because it's going to be necessary on this oh, one yeah. comparatively to some of the other ones well i mean you can always do what i did for the longest time still technically do play camry when it, well you know it's related to that i play camry but when it comes to passing rules if i'm playing tabletop my opponent's like well what do you need to what do you need for this and i'm like I have no clue. It, it's never part of a game that I do, so. That's not true. We saw you pass the ball to upset number one ranked TCU back in like week six. That that is true, but it's even funnier because I say that. And at uh, at Chaos Cup, I had a long bomb touchdown, and I, it took me longer to do that than it was like the rest of the half because it, I didn't know. I had to look up every single part of it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so speaking to the card you were talking about earlier, illegal substitution, albeit just a baby rotter. Still, better than nothing. Yeah, it's something he has to deal with. So the uh, projectile vomit can be used during a block or a blitz action. It takes over for the actual block. You have to roll a d6 on a 1, the player belches and doesn't do anything. On a 2+, plus, the player regurgitates acidic bile on the target and then you go straight to an armor roll um, it cannot be modified in any way and if it's broken 
the player becomes prone and an injury roll is made against them, and if the armor is not broken, then basically the move has no effect. So by reading that, I'm assuming you have to be standing next to the person. So it's essentially a stab with another dice roll in it. I was going to say a slightly worse stab because it has to be a 2+. plus. Hmm. Interesting, though. Now, if a troll does that, for example, does he also have to roll for his really stupid roll? Yes, it's ah. still an action. Okay, that's... Uh... <laughs> I don't know. When would you ever use that instead of just like a block? I mean, it's I guess it's safer than a block because you can't fail, but you can still fail the really stupid. Well, and if you're say you have a non-block troll, you know, if you fail the really stupid or if you fail the acidic vial, you're not going to end the round. You're not going to end your turn. And if you say roll the skulls or the boat downs then obviously that has the potential to end your thing because on your reroll, you're going to have to go for the loner roll. I, I have a bit of a wish list for that. Although loner is well, still 4 plus on the troll, for example, but continue. Uh, my wish list for that would be uh, if you if, if he's already eaten the player this turn, then you get the uh, a, a bonus, like, mighty blow for that. <laughs> that would be, yeah, if he'd eaten a goblin, then for some reason he has a mighty blow applied <laughs> extra, to his... Extra his chunky stuff. vomit, yeah. <laughs> I think vomit. See what bile rod does here. I was gonna say is just I think even for the NBFL the the lowering of the team values may be a good thing if we like you say go to two thousand or something along those lines as your buyback rules for it. Yeah, I mean some of the teams are just so far up there. Um, is it? Kansas City's normally around three thousand every season to begin with, and he almost never takes enough perms to get lower than that. Which. Just mathematically, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because Chaos Pact are very susceptible to getting injured, but I don't know. It hasn't worked out for them record-wise yet, but certainly has a very solid team for this season. I, I know it's not canon, like like you, player teams are not canon, but what is the like like the the value of the Reavers or something in in the in in canon because player teams are not what yeah i don't, I don't understand are you talking okay about okay the team um volume? okay so you you have teams the big name gouge die reichland reavers and the like okay what is their value because three thousand seems like it'd be a lot more than those than than, than like the teams of legend i think I mean, I don't follow Blood Bowl that closely. I know in like Blood Bowl Two, they have those just kind of like pre-made rosters you can use whenever you're playing multiplayer standalone. And I think most of them, they've got like three versions. There's like the 1100 team, the 1500 team, and the 1700 team, for example. And I think Reichland Reavers and the whatever the Orc team is, like they're all like 1700ish. But maybe that's just something they threw together for the game. Well, I think. We can all look at it, and it's always been something that's been discussed in Bumble as a whole. Is the game and the rule set was obviously not designed to play with teams at 3,000 team value, which is also some of the 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 fun value of the MBFL is because you have such gigantic teams that you wouldn't normally have. Right. I also don't think the game is designed to be played at 1,000 TV either, because just rookie games are. They're just fucking awful. Well, you look at you look at teams like Nurgle, for example, or even Chaos. They struggle so bad at rookie games comparatively to like Undead or even you humans know, or something or yeah. something like that or humans, yeah. And then you have the outliers, dwarves and Amazons that are ready to go out of the gate, right? And then just get worse as it goes. Not these dwarves, I suppose. They've got the ball in relative scoring position. We'll see what John Molson can do. You want to make them score so you have a chance to win this game before overtime, but neither side has used rerolls. <laughs> Dirt through saying, then you have Kemri, which is always bad, so. Ouch. Nothing but the truth. Ouch. But remember, Dirt through, he plays Kemri too in this league. He's the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks. Uh, he feels I your pain. Wanted... Does Camry want... have a Super Bowl, or just I know that the, it, they, there's been a couple Camry teams that have at least made the Super Bowl. 
Poods went to the Super Bowl, lost to Gru, which is no shame. The fact that I lost him in the AFC Championship game is a slight shame. Um, Jeffro, I th- he made the playoffs once in his two or three seasons with his Kemry, the Crowns. I don't think he got past the first round, may have gotten to the second. I don't remember any other real Kemry teams, though. Oh, that's like you talk about Poots losing the Gru. That was my comment always before I was able to win the Super Bowls last season is I'd been to one Super Bowl and lost to Stime, and then I'd been to two NCAA, NCBB championships and lost to Crichton and lost to Gru. So it's tough to complain about those losses that badly. All right. Looks like we can get a bloater next to the ball, but definitely a surf target. I would like to see more bombs. Am I the only one? Come on. Yeah, I mean, the chainsaws were a bit of a letdown. I think well, the bombardier has bomb. been a little busy, but yeah. Okay, a little harder to surf now. He can swing those guys around and force the dwarves. Probably advance the ball up and score. This could be big, too, if you get a good block with the bloater and can move the rot spawn and tie up some players with tentacles. Dwarves really being a, a pickle. All right, he needs the rotter to be standing at the end of this. Then you blitz the rotter free. He throws the bomb onto the little cage they have going on there. Boom, dead dwarves. Game over. <laughs> four, uh, no, four dead no dwarves. Uh, blitz. He already used it. He's used the blitz. No, I meant, the I'm saying on, on the next turn. I'm, I'm speaking in, in advance. <laughs> Man, that, uh, that rot spawn, he kind of stupid. We might need to investigate John Molson and see what their uh, admission standards are because I'm not sure that guy's smart enough to be in college. <laughs> someone someone sat for him for the entrance exams. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Can we get the old South Park uh, plan when it comes to the, the, the rot spawn and the bomb right now? It's just step one, throw bomb. Step two, step three, profit. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see what Karak University can do here. They've been hemmed in against the sideline, pushed from, I guess, the front. Towards the, towards the end zone. You do have a path out, but you'd have to probably block the bloater with the slayer, but then you want to get somebody out so you don't have to half die. Hmm. Oh, that's not good either. Cal Ripskin Jr. minus AV regeneration failed. This will set John Wilson back a little bit. That's two two scale positionals that have been permanent. Potential surf game. coming up. I mean, potential, Ooh. but I don't think you can afford to do it. You need to get that ball out of there. Yeah, but Connor, surf, bro, surf. You're the one always. I mean, I love me some surf, but I don't think it was the play, and Nuffle agreed with me. Not only he failed the foul appearance, used the reroll to get past that, but then he sculled. And now the just ball is just out, there for the just taking. pointing out our dream for the bombs are still on the table. This is true. I think yeah. now's the time. Yeah, don't even two-die that guy and then two-die the ball. Just block free the rotter who has bombardier and bomb all five dwarves at once. That's the play, right? I mean, that's where we start and then we go downhill from there. Hey, or you yeah. push, push him into it, now you throw the bomb. Boom. There you go. Throw the bomb right in the middle. We want bombs. We want bombs. I mean, this is probably the better play, but the bombs sound entertaining. That it does. Now the question is, where do you push him? I guess he goes yeah, with the sideline. Probably go to the sideline and chuck it the other way. Nope. All right, now you block the. No, blitzer. use the other guy. Yeah, I was gonna say you block. I was gonna say you block the blitzer with the rot spawn. Then you pick up with the pestigore once you've thrown the bombs, or you can pick up then throw the bombs afterwards. Just something where we still get bombs. <laughs> I I blame the NCBB bowl committee for this one. Uh, the chainsaws were a big letdown. Look, well, your first your we... first issue there is if you want to have. 
a reliable chainsaw foul nonsensical game. You need to have two teams like Kemri and Undead in there realistically. Come on now. I mean, Navy somehow won enough games to be above this tier of ball games, so I couldn't I know, include right? them, and there was no Undead team in the league this year, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, well, uh, Ottawa, duh. So they're a little above that too. Fresno was hanging around. You could have thrown them in a bowl game. They didn't deserve it. Yeah. They didn't play any games. They didn't play any games <laughs> at all. Hey, you know. hey, what's the NCBB without some, you know... Controversy? Yeah. Well, I was going to say corruption, but you know. Okay, that that's, that's a little mean. <laughs> I think you had the three die there with the rot spawn. It would have taken that so you could tie up both linos. Because... Oh, dear God. That got kind of stupid. That rod spawn is, uh, uh, he needs, someone, someone needs to, uh, check his tutor's license. Uh, I have a feeling his tutor's been doing his homework for him. Yeah. He's almost as bad as that troll, uh, or snow troll last night. Yeti, I so, guess he's technically So called. far the rod spawn hasn't tried to kill himself. True. He's been too stupid to try it. Oh, well, Shaquille, well, that. Shaquille O'Neal attempted the same, but only knocked himself out. Hmm. All right, still a good turn for the Nurgle. Looks like we might get a card here. Nope, okay. Turn five, so four left for the Dwarves. They've got to get the ball back somehow and then uh, make sure to stay in scoring range. Somehow get into the end zone before the final gun. Should be able to set up some sort of hit on the ball here. Looks like he's got a one die right now. Not sure you need to mark the rot spawn. Like you just want him to continue to fail rolls, right? Yeah, I think. I mean, once once the rot spawn's real stupid, like he is right now, that at that point I would try to scatter all my guys away from him. Oh, I think that was a misclick. And force him to was it though because where else would he have dodged well if he's gonna uh, dodge into a tackle zone he should have dodged into the one where the pestigore was because otherwise you'd have to dodge out again and then touch the pestigore yeah i was more thinking he had a free uh line dwarf he could have gone up put a tackle zone on him for free okay zedrock saying in the game chat he didn't see the rotter he must have blended in with the the green of the field. A little off green right now. It's a little dry out there. And in fact, the player's profile picture is, is a little green as well. So just very well hidden. Maybe a tactical decision to use the, the rotter there. But, uh, Throw the bomb. Throw the bomb. There's three line dwarves right there. That's true. Still has three cards available and a bribe too. Come on now. Let's see some more chaos here. Anarchy! You got a nice bomb target down here at the bottom, right? You bump that up there, boom. Uh, don't follow up, and then you throw the bomb right at Elric, or whatever his name is. Hyperbole Namer in the Twitch chat lamenting that the non-AQ seems to be doing pretty good in the bowl games, but his team didn't quite measure up. But UM, Golden Gophorts had one hell of a team. That was... That was not an easy opponent, and Texas Tech played an admirable game. I think this might be, you know, the game for Carrick. I don't see how they recover from this. Boom. Bomb. Yes! We this want bombs. Only, this we only go want well. bombs. Do it! I think you burned the reroll on this pass. I mean, he doesn't have to. Yes! The. Oh. I mean, I'm still gonna cheer. Because that's what we wanted. It just wasn't Ooh. quite. Grease shoot. Grease shoot. Oh, nice. This is the card that Baz used to finish off his game when uh, Texas AM beat Ball Day? No, they beat Charlotte the other day. Humans are trying to score on the last turn. They needed some GFIs, and Baz just pulls out the oh, card. And another one. Oh. Colon playbook. 
Just burning all his cards. Huh? You give shadowing to, <laughs> to bile rot. Interesting. Well, it keeps him from you know making any interesting plays. I think next turn you automatically score as Don Molson. You don't play around with your food. I was just gonna say this is some this is somewhere where like the new st the new stalling rules that people have been talking about. <clears throat> This seems like a situation where you'd want to stall because, you know, you don't want to give dwarves another opportunity. Yeah, I stalled a little bit earlier in my SLA game. Is there is there even an actual ruling on the stalling? It talks about it on the one page, but I don't see any sort of penalty for doing it. Right. I mean, it could be elsewhere in the book as well. I've only seen that little clip snippet. snippet. So I think it's something they're going to put in the rule book as like a suggestion, maybe? It's like... If you want to use this rule, here's our guideline for it. But it doesn't seem like it's gonna be like a hard fast rule like no stalling. So that's what I have a PDF copy that has every page of the rule book, and with the exception of two of them in German, I'm able to read through the entire rule book. That it's I mean they're shitty photos, but Right. So I and I've read through it, I don't see anything in there about stalling. Other than the mention of, you know, this constitutes stalling, which I don't, I don't know what that does for you at that point in the game. Maybe it's in the well, one of the German pages. Maybe we'll get freshmen to translate it for us. Uh, Hyper saying in the chat that the only thing is a roll on the prayers to Nuffle chart, so I don't know. There was a lot of talk on the forums about that rule and the death of stalling and all that, but it could have been blown out of proportion. I don't I see how you would... Theorize. I don't see how you would make such a drastic change to stalling because it's just going to hurt your dwarf and your chaos teams. I mean, do you really want to penalize them for stalling against, you know, Skaven? It's a tricky subject because stalling is just incredibly boring and sometimes when a team is just blasted off the field and the half is essentially over by turn four and then there's nothing the other team can do, and the games like that are incredibly boring, so, you know, removal's been nerfed a little bit. Passing's... I don't know. It's... Well, but... But yes, you're giving, talking, the, giving the ball back talking, to Skaven and stuff is awful. It, you're, what you're talking about, like, right there, like you said, is... So you're going to force a Dwarf team to score because they've blown the Skaven off the pitch, and then give the Skaven three turns to score back before the Skaven gets the ball? I mean, you're basically going to lose them. I wonder if it's going to be something like an illegal procedure type situation, where you know, on, on, on in the rule book, you know, if they don't turn their turn mark or any number of things, you can call it a legal procedure. And if I recall correctly, that costs them a, a re or something. Right. So I mean, that'd be some that'd be something interesting. Right. Every turn you stall, maybe you know, hey, pay a reroll. That seems or, worth it to me. Or I think if you're out of rerolls. Then it's then it's a turn over turn out. Okay. Hyper pointing out that if you roll that prayer, there's a chance if your opponent is stalling, a fan can throw a rock at the ball. So that's kind of interesting. Ooh, another bomb. No. Fumbles it. I mean, fumbling it right there may not be bad, technically. <laughs> 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 Bombs himself and the dwarf, but nobody's worse for the wear. I feel the need that, like, well, I was going to say we paid for blood, and there's actually been a decent amount of blood this game so far. Yeah, I mean, a little one-sided, but... The dwarfs have come out ahead in the blood category, but are going to lose the game. That's hey, a... it sounds like Navy. That's how it be sometimes. <laughs> Ooh! It's been a pretty solid game from both sides. John Molson didn't get off to a good start. They couldn't take down a dwarf to save their lives or chainsaw hurt himself and then got eliminated by the other chainsaw early but they stuck with it got the ball back after it was fumbled oh there's a foul then managed to score after a failed dwarf dodge to set up a two die and then dwarves on offense took the flank up top had a pretty good collection of dwarves over there but the nurgle collapsed on them and then weren't able to get through and lost the ball so Pretty good battle overall between two teams that were, you know, slow-paced, methodical, and 
trying to chainsaw each other. Now and then, uh, Connor, are you playing at the top of the hour then? Yes, playing in approximately 35 minutes against OTS, so unfortunately that'll be a double header with another game on. Well, if, if Rel logs on and wants to play tonight, someone's going to need to get the quad box up, because you might have three games going at once. Oh, wow. How are we going to get commentary on your game? <laughs> Not to my knowledge. Assuming that was directed at me. Yeah. I think Baz is the only other person in the NBFL chat who can do the streaming. I know I helped Apajar set it up, but he's not in that channel, although I don't suppose it would be difficult for him to do so if he wanted to. There's our score by John Molson, so 2-0 to zero in favor of the Nurgle over the Dwarves of Karak. This game's pretty much over. Going to be a couple obligatory blocks. Probably not a foul, but you never know. The bribe not able to keep the bombardier rotter on the field, unfortunately. So just a quick recap of the games coming up. Uh, I think I have a message for it. Ba -ba <laughs> Bowl games. So Thursday. The first one is the Wonder Brawl Bowl between Ohio Wesleyan and Hawaii. That's the pro off battle, 8 p.m. Mm. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. Ioneer is going to be throwing up watching that game. I will love every second of it. But the headliner. I want to see a 5 to 4 score. Come on. Oh, for uh, sure. Yeah, for sure. I want to see a 1 nothing defensive struggle. Well, if that's your kind of game, then you want the game after that. That's the second semifinal between number 2 Gallaudet, number 3 Duke. That's probably going to be lower scoring than the, you know, pro off battle if I had to guess. Somehow somehow that game ends up 3-3 three, three, and the pro off they go for 0-0 zero, zero tie. I mean, I wouldn't actually expect 3-3, three to three, but it's not impossible with those bull centaurs and players like Nob Carson, the stat skink. But I think more, most likely a low-scoring game is the third one tomorrow, the Waffle House Salty Tears Bowl between Illinois Valley and Miami. That's an hour after that. So 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Eastern, all back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. I'll find a way to broadcast them if I can. The Orange Bowl between Navy and Oregon is Friday at 7 p.m. Central. And then the Rose Bowl between TCU and... SMU is like Friday at like noon central. That one's gonna be a little tougher. I don't get up that early anymore. Could have just knocked him down. I don't think he has block. He wanted the trust layer. He must not realize. Ooh. <laughs> And now he's still up. Hmm. That pass is where we wanted it to. Ugh. Those uh, games, when things like that just don't work. This is true. No more vanity passing in the new rulebook anyways, right? But that's it for today's game. The gnarly chain... Whatever the hell it's called. The chainsaw ball ends in a 2-0 victory for John Molson. They throw their last oh, chop block. card out there for the hell of it. <laughs> so congratulations to Coach Uber and his non-AQ team. They'll be getting promoted soon enough. We'll have some sort of catfight over all these non-AQ teams in our conference commissioner chat soon enough. It's Actually, I was wondering, because uh, it's more fluff and more things to watch, will you be broadcasting the uh, conference draft? No. Oh, no, no. I, I think that'd be awesome. <laughs> it would be hilarious, but... It was awful last season. It's that's what we were. That's what we're It's here like for. a bunch of teenage girls fighting over like something ridiculous. It's that sounds. Oh, that sounds amazing. Uh, I don't like that kind of cheap TV stuff. But we'll we'll think about it. We'll think about it. Regardless. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> you guys and your smut TV. Regardless, that's it for today's broadcast. We're going to be hopefully catching all three games tomorrow. So thank you, Robo and Einir, for joining me now. Uh, Hyper and Durthu, among others, are watching on Twitch. So 
Thanks for not locking the door and letting me back in. Yeah, of course. All right. Catch you next time, everybody. Have a good one.